But let's look at what COVID's done to the industry, because this is important to know, to understand the challenge, which then reflects on workforce. Because the type of workforce that we need in automotive today is completely different to most people's understanding. We're struggling to get people into automotive because people have a perception of automotive as dirty, dirty rags and oil and just doing the same process day after day. Couldn't be further from the truth. Some automotive plants are cleaner than hospitals because of that focus on quality. And I know that there's a lot of moving pieces with that, especially in supply chain. There's when deliveries come in and when things need to be taken, things need to be sent out. But you're logistics professionals, you're supply chain professionals. You can figure that out if it means that you're going to be able to keep people. So it's challenging those other those old traditional processes. And it's not just about paid time off, it's not just about vacation time, it's about when the work gets done and allowing for them to be able to take part in the things that are important to them in their life no matter what that is. And if you're developing relationships with them, you'll know that. What you know, we call the now economy, like we need everything to be done right this second, if not sooner, so how can we make that happen, right? So just Think about, you know, I, from my own consumer level, like what's my decision when I go on Amazon? Do I want this item delivered at 10 a.m. tomorrow? Or can I wait till my, you know, save the number of packages and wait till Thursday? Just depends on what the item is, right? But this whole society that we're in where we need everything right this second, very, very hard to manage from a customer expectation perspective because sometimes you need more than a few hours to answer a question that a customer has or deal with a problem that a customer is having. It takes a minute to solve it. It's not instantaneous. We had uh, probably somewhere in the area of about a thousand pounds per day that hits the floor. And if any of you are in food service, you know once it hits the floor, it's out of play. You have to throw it out. And everybody said to me, you know what, that's not, not such a big deal. It's 1%, okay, going through the day. And I said, well, that 1% thousand pounds works out to be about three thousand dollars per day in ingredients and they said well three thousand that's not so bad and I said well annualized that's a little over six hundred thousand would you like to have that as a salary and that resonated people said you know what I would that would be kind of nice and they said that's your bonus that we're throwing away every day so personalizing it changing the message and and letting people see where do they fit into the organization really was key towards the transformation of saying look you know we have to be doing some things better so in the work world as well as academia there is kind of a fresh resurgence of looking at this phenomena or this problem through the lens of social hierarchy and social class. So understanding the social hierarchy and social class, does this influence our decision making? And if so, how does it, is it doing it in the way that can be positive or negative in its bias? So for example, we have analyzed a call center data set with more than 70,000 routing decisions. And we discovered that the inertia behavior exists when call center agents route calls to different agents. And by definition, the inertial behavior in this context means that it is more likely for an agent to route an issue to another agent that they already have experience with instead of optimally route the issue to other agents. For examples that I have in every survey, so uh, samples, you know, cost of energy, commodity pricing, labor shortages, border delays, and I actually, there's a summary comment. So this is someone wrote down and said, economic slowdown will impact the demand. We're heading towards a recession, fiscal year 23. That person particularly wrote that. 